most should direct meta, and then you have the halogens, which are kind of the oddball, right, because those are the ones that are uh, ortho para directing deactivators, all right? So we'll kind of go through, we've got a, at least one example of each type of substituent. So let's start with the activators. So the activators are going to be a little bit more complicated than the rest because they have activating groups, right? Meaning that the reaction is going to be very fast and could possibly go multiple times. So we'll look first at Jessica's toluene. So toluene has a um, alkyl group on it, obviously, which is a weak activating group. So if we take a look at what she has in terms of the product, it's a one to three to 26 mixture, okay? Meaning that the smallest amount of stuff that she's got is just the para nitro product. The vast majority of what else she has is actually dinitrated. So the reaction is, the, because of the presence of the activating group, it's going multiple times or twice as the case is. And the designation here is uh, a diortho substituent, and then the other, the more prominent one, is the ortho para. So, what that's referring to is the diortho, meaning both of the nitro groups ended up ortho, and the ortho para just means that the two ortho or the two substituent groups, one ended up ortho one ended up para to the methyl. Okay. So does it make sense to you why there's a large difference in these two products? Why there's so much more of the ortho para relative to the di ortho? Does that make sense? Is it just the steric mm -hmm. reasons? Yeah. So whenever you have these groups that are all right next door to one another, that's not exactly a favorable orientation because just strain. It's a lot better to have those nitro groups away from one another than all bunched up together. Okay. But um, what we see is not maybe all that surprising where because of the presence of the activating group, the majority of your product is actually dinitrated product. Okay. Um, is there any questions on this or the interpretation of this? Um, we can go to the other activating group, which was uh, anisol. So what we see here is we've got actually four products. You have some ortho, you have some para, which is what we would expect because the methoxy group is a strong activating group. But the majority of their product was that dinitro ortho para. Okay, you can buy a lot, right? Um, for Ethan, that was 40, a relative 40 times more of the ortho para to the rest, and Gordon's was 237 times more than the rest. So it was a lot of dinitrated product. And that, again, that's not terribly surprising. With these strong activating groups, it's sometimes hard to stop them from just at one substitution. Okay. Why do they even have a starting material? Oh, they don't have starting material because it all reacted, <laughs> right? Um, and, and again, that's maybe not too surprising. If they have strong activating groups, the, that reaction is going to happen very fast. And so all of the starting material got consumed, and so they had none of it left. Okay, but again, what we're going to see is the behavior of those activating groups is very different from the deactivating groups we're about to talk about. Okay, um, But the other thing before we leave the activators, notice that the vast majority of their product is all ortho and or para. Right? We don't see any meta substitution. All right. Any questions there with the activator? All right, then let's go ahead and look. Uh, we'll go to the oddball first. Let's do the, the halogens. Remember the halogens, these are deactivating groups, but they should direct ortho para, according to theory. Um, with all three of these guys, 
what you see is they mostly have starting material. Right? And again, maybe not too surprising, it's a deactivating group, meaning it's going to slow the reaction down. So it might have been, maybe instead of letting these go for, what do we go, 15 minutes, 30 minutes at the tops, maybe with these deactivating groups, we should have let them react longer, maybe a period of several hours, maybe overnight, and we would have gotten better yield, you know, less starting material. But of the product that was made, um, you can see it's exclusively, um, either ortho substitution. Um, a couple people saw some dye, which is a little bit strange, but, um, but of the product that was made, they got ortho substitution, which we might expect from an ortho para director. All right. And now we move to the deactivating groups. So uh, trifluoromethyl, methyl benzoate, acetophenone, these guys are all three deactivators. If we look at the product, uh, the product distribution of all of these, the vast majority of all of them is starting material. So again, we're seeing kind of a common trend with the deactivating groups, whether they're these three or whether they're the halogen, we see primarily starting material. Okay, these reactions maybe just need to run longer when they have deactivating groups on them. But take a look at the of the product that actually was made, of the nitro versions of all of these, you see that the majority, and some of these kind of buy a lot, is the meta product. Okay, you do see some ortho. Okay, so whenever we, whenever we talk about these meta directors, ortho para directors, we're not saying that you're going to get a hundred percent meta or 100% ortho para, you just have a majority of those, okay? But um, does anybody have questions on the data here? Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why the, most of the deactivators went ortho rather than para? Most, well. Yeah, why don't we see any numbers in the para line, uh, column? For which one? For all the deactivators. For all the deactivators? Yeah, like most of them went meta, but then a lot of people saw ortho as well and not para. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, yeah, that is kind of interesting. Like but a lot of the para is going to be major product, but. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I mean. Maybe if we ran it longer, we'd see some. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of, of the activating groups, you are seeing a majority of kind of para substitution, right? I mean, of these, the, the majority was the dye substituted, but of the two dye, you're going to get, you're primarily getting the ortho para. So kind of in, in that sense, you are seeing a majority um, para product, but, um, but yeah, the, the kind of the, the take home message here is that, uh, what I hope you can see anyway, is that these data fit fairly well with what we would expect based on theory. You know, the deactivating groups, the reactions are clearly slow, which is why you see so much starting material. But of the product that was made, the meta is your predominant. The ortho para directors, the, sorry, the, the strong activators, both of those, you can tell these reactions are very fast because you're getting primarily dye substituted product. And of those products, the vast majority is, or it's, it's exclusively ortho para. You don't see any kind of meta with the strong activating groups. Okay. Any questions on, on the group data here? Okay, then what I'd like to do is kind of walk you through uh, what I would like for you to address in your conclusion. All right, so first off, um, I would like for you to have the table of data because presumably you're going to be discussing it in your conclusion. Okay, 
So have the table. Uh, if you haven't copied it down, you might want to do that or take a picture of it or something so that you have this when you go to write up your conclusion. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so um, the other thing that I would like for you to do is kind of discuss the group data. So discuss the substituent or directing effects in the context of this data. So maybe what you want to do is kind of what we just did, you know, kind of break them down by category. You know, have a paragraph discussing the strong activators, have a paragraph for the deactivators, have a paragraph for the kind of the oddball, the halogen, okay? So kind of discuss those substituent effects in the, the context of the data that we got as a class. The rest of this is gonna be focused on just your compound in particular, okay? Well, you're only gonna be using this table, the group data for this first bullet, okay? Um, the rest of this is just kind of focusing on your specific data that you got, all right? So I would like for you to interpret some of the, the mass spectra that you got. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about how these functional groups tend to fragment, you know, the predicted fragmentation patterns in lecture today. So look at your compound and based on the kind of common fragmentation patterns that we've discussed, see if you can identify some of those peaks okay for instance we talked about how benzene rings fragment one of the common ways they fragment is loss of the side chain so you should all see some kind of peak somewhere between 76 77 that range corresponding to the benzene cation so um, go through and see if you can identify some of the more common fragments uh, that you would expect um, in your mass specs, all right? We also talked about the nitrogen rule. Um, putting nitro groups on the benzene is obviously putting a nitrogen group in. So do, you, do your spectra fall in line or, or uh, fit the nitrogen rule, all right? Um, I would also like for you to think about would, would UV spectroscopy be useful in characterizing your products? You know, in, in, and if so, how? In the past, if you, I don't know if, if you had a chance to read the experiment three, the kind of the, the traditional way of doing this experiment, the nitration of acetanilide. But before we got the mass spec, we would just have you do the reaction of, uh, of uh, the nitration of acetanilide and then characterize using IR and UV spectroscopy. So, would UV spectroscopy be useful? And if so, what would you look for? How would it be useful? So think about that. Um, and then finally, I'd like for you to address the order of elution relative to the boiling points. Okay, there is, um, you probably learned this last semester, there is a relationship between the boiling point of a compound and its retention time or elution rate in GC. So you might have to do a little looking, you might have to find the boiling points of your compounds, but do you see that hold up? Do you see that relationship between boiling point and retention time? Does it, um, is it verified? Okay. Um, any questions on this? Mm -hmm. Does our um, graphs, do our graphs here include the um, M plus? Like is it like on the ones you did in the lecture? There was always m plus equals. I'm just wondering if it shows that. Oh no, but it'll be the the highest mass peak. So like your ethyl benzoate, that's the m plus is the 150 right there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, any other questions on 
the data or the conclusion. Mm -hmm. For the bullet point, are we doing it for the starting material or is this a product? Do it for what you can find. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions on the data or the conclusion? All right, then if not, um, what I would like to do now is kind of just take you across the hall and just show you the instrument.